Hello, welcome to Santa Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Bone Shops and Bone Shops. I say this every time. Book Shops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is a cozy fantasy coming out November 7th, 2023 from Tor McMillan. I received this arc from the publishers in audiobook format in exchange for a fair review. I listened to it on the NetGalley Shelf app, and I must say their audiobook part of that app is way better than their physical reading app. Also, the narrator, who is also the author, did a great job. He's really great with voices and stuff like that. At the end of this review, I have a few Should You Read Legends and Lantes first pointers, so stay tuned for that if you haven't read Legends and Lantes yet. But first of all, what is this book about if you have no idea? When an injury throws a young, battle-hungry orc off her chosen path, she may find that what we, what we need isn't always what we seek. Viv's career with a notorious mercenary company, Rackham's Ravens, isn't going as planned. Wounded during the hunt for a powerful necromancer, she's packed off against her will to recuperate in the sleepy beach town of Merc, so far from the action that she's worried she'll never be able to return to it. What's a thwarted soldier fortune to do? Spending her hours at a beleaguered bookshop in the company of its foul-mouthed proprietor is the last thing Viv would have predicted, but it may be both exactly what she needs and the seed of change that, couldn't, that she couldn't possibly imagine. Still, adventure isn't all that far away. A suspicious traveler in grey, a gnome with a chip on her shoulder, a summer fling, and an improbable number of skeletons prove Merc to be more eventful than Viv could have ever expected. One of my few reading regrets is that I never jumped on the Legends and Lattes train when it first came out. I recall seeing the cover reveal back on the Elon app before it was the Elon app, and it was one of those I meant to get to but never did. And then Valdry made a deal with Macmillan and I was like, oh, I'll get to it someday now. <laughs> It's not like I'm opposed when a self-pubbed author gets a trad deal. I mean, that's great for them. That's awesome. But they changed the cover. I'm not going to buy it with that boring cover. I want the one that looks like Dragonlance. <laughs> I did end up listening to it, actually, this past weekend because I had a five-hour drive, so it was perfect. I have that review coming up on Thursday. I debated whether to review Legends first, but then I decided, now nah, do this one first <laughs> since that's the order I read it in. The reason why these books are so much fun is because it's just like a regular cozy mystery, but it's fantasy. If you've never read a cozy mystery before, it's like a lighthearted, easy to read, no gore or real violence story. It's about people just kind of living their regular lives with something kind of different happening, but not different doesn't mean, you know, it's the end of the world or there's a war or something crazy happened. It's just like, oh, this thing has happened and we have to deal with it. Anyway, this story in particular is cute and fun and has a happy ever after, but in a bittersweet way. And while there might be a romance subplot, it's not romance with a capital R in that it's not a three-act structure and the point of it is not that the two people get together. It's more about friendship and fun. It's like experiencing someone's life for a bit without the trauma of contemporary fiction and or the murder and assault of thrillers. <laughs> I don't tend to read cozy mysteries very often, mainly because I find them like a little bit boring but this this is different i love sort of sor sorcery fantasy i love fantasy that doesn't presuppose you need like medieval ideas or what we take to be medieval ideas because there's a lot we don't know about the dark ages socially to be fantasy by this i mean sexism racism homophobia this book is very queer normative which i very much enjoyed also this book is the opposite of a sausage fest which i like too i love to see women working and being friends together it's just like nice <laughs> In terms of the story, I thought the characters were a lot of fun. Everyone is small town quirky, but they're a random mix of fantasy races. Viv the orc has an unsurprising arc, but it's one that gets out of the way rather quickly, leaving us with characters playing off one another in ways that are just delightful. The world building is very fun. It's not extensive. You basically just take what you already know of fantasy books and D&D &D and throw it all together. This book is like what the characters in Warcraft do when they're not battling. And I'm not talking World of Warcraft here. I'm talking like Warcraft 2 and Warcraft three so when i was a child <laughs> i'm dating myself here so warcraft 2 was one of the first video games i played on pc i was 11 or 12 warcraft 3 though was the best in my opinion i had like all the expansions i spent way too much time playing warcraft and warcraft 2 and warcraft 3 Anyway, back to bone shops. While there are moments of humor in the book, the book is not a comedy. It's not the crew that I reviewed early in the year. It's not Terry Pratchett. If you go into it thinking it's supposed to be some kind of a hilarious romp, that's not what it is. It's not a pastiche. It's just a fantasy where the focus is not the typical vein of fantasy, aka battles, monsters, quests, etc. Though there are some battles and fights, they're just not excessive and they're not gory. The writing is very engaging. It moves at a fast pace. The descriptions are detailed but not excessive. And there is the all lyrical bits of prose. And the dialogue is snappy. 
Back to the characters, I liked all of them, though of course there are two that I adored. The first is on the cover, the little critter called a griffit named Pot Roast. <laughs> He's clearly a mix of pug and bird, and he reminded me of my pug Denny, who used to grace my title end screen before he passed away last year. My other favorite character is, of course, a frickin' skeleton, because you guys know my heart on for skeleton characters. Get it? Because bone? Because skeletons are made of bones? And, and uh, never mind. I won't give you too solid of an explanation or their name, as it would be so spoilers, and I want you to enjoy it just as much as I did, but I loved that character to no end. I want to marry him. I'm already married, but that's, that's okay. Now, what else can I talk about without getting too deep into the plot and spoiler territory? There's a cute sapphic romance. I also love when a small, adorable character, this one's named Fern, swears a lot and is like stupid feisty. <laughs> I loved the accent Baldry gave the character Galena, and I adore that a lot of it took place in a rundown bookshop. Clearly, I love books. <laughs> Obviously, that's why I have a booktube channel, but bookshops are just, you know, they're just a place that's just so wonderful. So I guess it's safe to say that I pretty much adored this book. Did I like it more than Legends and Lattes? Actually, yes, way, way more actually, but I will talk about that on Thursday. <laughs> if you love Legends and Lattes though, you will not be disappointed with this, I'm assuming. And if you haven't read either and are curious, yes, both of them are a lot of fun. And I think you should pay attention though to my next part about the reading order. So Bookshops is a prequel. You can read it first like I did, but you must skip the epilogue. It has a major spoiler for Lattes. I heard the first sentence and I was like, nope, and went back and listened to it after I listened to Legends and Lattes in its, entire, in its entirety. You know, other than that, there was only one thing that didn't mesh 100%, and that's one minor character in Legends and Lattes is also in Bookshops, but their importance to Viv seems far less than it should have been in Legends, given what they went through together in Bookshops, and presumably after years of friendship. But whatever, I mean, who cares? <laughs> Overall, I highly recommend you check this book out. It is just so much fun. And it's just like a nice little happy story with necromancers and skeletons and hot guard ca captains and an old lady in a mansion. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. 